Hi, I'm Adam. I'm Hunter. I'm Davey Havoc. We are AFI. We are at Amoeba, and this is What's in Our Bags. The record that immediately jumped out to me is a Nick Cave album. Henry's Dream is probably my favorite, but The Good Son is my second. The Ship Song is my all-time favorite uh, Nick Cave song. Oh, it make a history, baby. Every time you come around. Let's see, this first thing I got is a Bobby Hutcherson record. I really like the cover. Me too. I don't know this record, but he's a really great like vibes player. I guess Herbie Hancock plays on this record too. I mean, I try to get stuff that I don't really know yeah. that mm -hmm. well, but right. stuff that I am really interested in listening to. I can pull out the suicide record. What a rough past year we had because we lost Alan yeah, um, so amidst funny. other great, hugely influential artists. It's safe to say that we're all fans here of their work and this record, which is just so wildly ahead of its time and cutting edge and what they were doing with electronics and soundscapes and mood and, and creating darkness within this like minimal, crunchy noise, art sound. Very impactful to many. Thank you, Alan. Grab this uh, Blue Cheer record. Anyone who wants to know how psychedelia got to metal, Blue Cheer is kind of the, the linking band, I think. Before Sabbath, there was Blue Cheer. And they're British, right? They're from San Francisco. Oh, wow. So they, these guys, while everyone was kind of coming down from their summer love, were playing really heavy and mm -hmm. really, really loud. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, Lord, there ain't no cure for the summertime blue. Wow! My dad actually was a drummer and he always talks about seeing Blue Cheer and how they were just trying to blow your face off. I got this box set here, William Onyebor, who just passed away yesterday. He was like a, a Nigerian punk artist. My girlfriend turned me on to him like only a couple months ago and I figured this is like four albums. It's a good start. Would be a good start, yeah. <laughs> So this is the Sisters of Mercy, first and last and always, 30th anniversary edition of the 1985 classic debut LP, and includes Black Planet, Body and Soul, Walk Away, After Hours, and Body Electric. I mean, how do you walk away from this when you see it in the record store? The Sisters of Mercy, I feel, are so horribly, egregiously underrated yeah. and uncredited. Yeah. On these early seven inches, you'll hear similarities to what was going on on Factory Records and, and with the you know, Joy Division-esque post-punk, and you know, those, they were peers. But what they grow into on Floodland is so unique and, and so definitive. Just how lush and cinematic, yet hooky and rich and dancey it is, while still being very artful and very poignant, and Andrew's lyrics are fantastic. I picked up White Fence live album, live wow. in San Francisco. Tim is an old friend of ours from back when everyone lived in the Bay Area. I still live there, but we all lived in the same house at one point in Berkeley. I actually haven't heard this record. It's really hard to keep on top of what he does because he makes 17 records a year. But um, I especially liked his brother, this photo of Sean Paul Presley right there. So that made me pick this one over. <laughs> As it will make you pick it. Yeah. <laughs> Tim is so talented, talented in the fine arts songwriting. He's been in many bands over the years from the iconic 
Bay Area hardcore band, The Nerve Agents, to Darker My, uh, Darker My Love. Love. Kind of everything he does is worth listening it's to, really in true. my opinion. So. Yeah, he's a true artist. One of the things that I have in my bag is this case. We've been touring for many, many years, and you know we're in dozens and dozens of cities, and they all have great record stores. And I'll go into these record stores, see great records that I want to buy, and I won't buy them because I figure like I'm never going to get that home in one piece. Mm -hmm. But with this, I can now buy records at will. Oh, we already spoke about the Sisters of Mercy, but I also got their picture disc with Andrew here. I believe this is an interview. Interview picture disc limited edition. Oh, nice. We get to hear Andrew speaking, which, to be honest, I don't have a vivid recollection of ever hearing him speak. Now's my chance. It'll be great. Yeah. I imagine his voice will be like this. <laughs> Probably not. Well, I think one good thing about this new album is that you can't tell that I can't sing. I don't think my singing's got better, but I've got better at hiding the fact that I can't sing. You don't want to talk Ooh. about that Rod Stewart? I do want to talk about that Rod Stewart. <laughs> do it. Oh, man. Oh, wow. I mean, Someone should buy this just based on the cover. Yeah. By itself. It is just However, fantastic. I'll go out on a limb and say this is the best Rod Stewart album. It has a fast side and a slow side, and Whoa. I prefer the slow side. But it has I Don't Want to Talk About It, which is a great ballad. If I stay here, won't you listen to my heart? This is a great record. Yeah, it is. I'm torn if this or Remain in Light is my favorite talking hands. You don't have Record. To pick. Side A starts with burning down the house, and side B ends with this must be the place. So, uh, right? Uh, Everything in, in between is amazing. I mean, just that opening sound of the record yeah. is you're just, oh, 10. Perfect. This is the first Spandau Ballet record. Spandau Ballet is great. I'm a fan of all of their records. This sits more in line with, I would say, the first two modern English records, Mesh and Lace and After the Snow, and has a very heavy post-punk, new romantic tone to it. If you like a, a darker song coming from the post-punk era with a hook, this record is really great. I picked up this. I think this record is worth listening to, if only for the opening track, Ladies and Gentlemen, We Are Floating in Space. starts with one sort of musical moment and then slowly introduces another and kind of builds and builds up to this beautiful crescendo and then starts stripping them away and ends with, you know, kind of where it's, the track started. If you have headphones and you really lock in, like, it's just such a great moment. It's everything that music should be and everything that we love about music. Tribe Called Quest album came out just a couple months ago, and um, they hadn't put out a record in like 18 years. And right. I feel like listening to this, it just like picked up where they left off, and it was great. And also like Five Dog passed away last year, and so it was like getting to hear him on the tracks was really cool. Who can come back years later, still hit the shot. Yeah. Still I'm trying to move you off the fucking block. Babylon, blood clot. Well, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, yeah. Really appreciate it. Always.